J.J. Greenberg loomed large in my educational orbit when I was a young adult as an advisor and counselor on numerous Jewish high school programs and as a member of Schlock Rock, a popular Jewish band. I didn't have the privilege of a relationship with J.J., but I did have a J.J. moment. During my gap year in Jerusalem, I approached J.J. after a Schlock Rock concert to give him regards from a mutual friend. I introduced myself with, I'm sure you don't remember me, but, and his immediate response was, of course I remember you, and proceeded to tell me everything he remembered about me. That entirely mundane moment, which I, of course, recorded in my journal, was a JJ moment, one in which I felt seen and valued, and one that I've come to understand was at the heart of what made him so beloved and so effective as a foundation professional. By the time of JJ's tragic death, I had begun my own relationship with JJ's parents, Rev Yitz and Blue, whom I especially idolize. I learned that JJ's deep concern for others and his elevation of a person's Selim Elohim, divine image, were transmitted to him by his parents, along with significant other values, such as humility, the pursuit of justice, and the demand that each of us and Judaism itself live up to our highest and best ideals. And so I can say with certainty that this year's J.J. Greenberg Memorial Awardee held in unanimous esteem by his trustees, by his foundation professional colleagues, and by his nonprofit partners similarly embodies these qualities. This year's awardee thoughtfully balances accountability and impact with an appreciation and empathy for how nonprofits function and what they need to thrive. Early on when the pandemic hit this spring, he proactively reached out to his grantees to reassure them that the foundation he works for was going to automatically renew their 2021 funding so that they would have one less thing to worry about. This year's awardee inhabits a quiet leadership. He listens closely, thinks deeply, seeks consensus and pragmatic solutions. Traits which helped him as board chair to effectively guide Joshua Ventures into a successful merger with Upstart. This year's awardee is committed to building an equitable and inclusive Jewish community. With integrity, he insists that our Jewish community be the best it can be. And with kindness and patience, he holds people and institutions to these standards building on deep and trusted relationships. And most recently, this year's awardee applied his deep intellectual curiosity to addressing the fractures in American democracy, skillfully advancing this work like so much else without dominating, always acknowledging the contributions of others. So why do I have the honor of announcing this year's winner? Well. Because 14 years ago, I had the foresight and good fortune to hire a recent college grad to work with me on the Matching Grants Initiative at the Jewish Funders Network. My new colleague quickly demonstrated the traits that would come to define his talented career. Creativity, generosity, and a wisdom beyond his years. Little did I know then that he would become such a trusted and important thought partner, mentor, and indeed, friend. I am honored to announce this year's J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award winner, Jonathan Horowitz, Director, National and Democracy Initiatives at the Klarman Family Foundation. As we look back at a year in which we've been confronted by a pandemic that revealed and exacerbated insecurities, that inspired us with calls for racial and economic justice, that forced us to contend with the polarization that has deepened the cracks in our democracies. We can also stop and recognize the ways that it has challenged us as philanthropists and philanthropy professionals to make the most of the gift we already had, to use philanthropy with boldness, with respect, and with humility to make a difference. I can think of no better awardee this year in particular than Jonathan, who already deeply understood how to use this gift and who, like JJ Greenberg before him, understands that what matters most is that every person matters. 
thank you to JFN for this award. This is the closest I will ever come to being like those directors who give pre-recorded award speeches because they're too busy filming their next project on location to show up in person. So uh, thank you for this. This is very fun for me. Uh, and thank you to Idana for your kind words. Every person should have a boss like you early in their career, someone who encourages them and instills confidence. I wanna take a moment to shine the spotlight on my colleagues at the Klarman Family Foundation, guided by the leadership of our trustees, Beth and Seth Klarman, and our executive director, Kim McCabe. When I think about our team, I'm immediately reminded of Rav Shammai's words, make learning a fixed practice, say little, and do much. I feel lucky to work every day with a team of people who are compassionate, humble, and as they've taught me to say in Boston, truly wicked smart. I'm humbled to accept this award that honors the memory of J.J. Greenberg. The people who have received this award over the years represent many of my personal role models in our field, and it feels particularly meaningful to receive this award following Shana Trebowasser, who has become a chavruta to me in our shared learning about the work of bridge building. In learning about J.J. Greenberg's life, I heard him described as hilarious, wacky, and always authentic. Felicia Herman described JJ as a person who raced to do goodness, who had an innate understanding of when to step up and lead and when to pull back and make space for others to lead. I'm struck by how much our world could use JJ in it right now. There's a lot of healthy conversation happening about the changes that are needed in the field of philanthropy. My first job as a program officer was in an office where we wore suits every day, where guests entered through a private elevator and were then quietly escorted into a boardroom with a long, dark wood table. The entire space reinforced the power dynamic. It created distance in relationships and made, the and made feedback nearly impossible. I wanna contrast that boardroom table for a moment with another table. In just a couple weeks, we will be celebrating Passover. And in this unusual year, I imagine many of us are longing for our usual Seder table. The Seder table I grew up with was loud and chaotic. Some people came year after year, and there were new people there each year as well. Just when we thought we'd figured out the room configuration, one of us would invite some more people, and we'd have to figure out how to squeeze in another folding table. Seder tables celebrate all questions, regardless of who is asking. They welcome challenging ideas and a range of lived experiences. Seder tables are full of wisdom and insight, but do not come equipped with theories of change or logic models or impact evaluations. When I think about the culture of Jewish philanthropy that many of us dream about, it looks a lot less like our boardrooms and a lot more like our Seder tables. It looks intergenerational, diverse, democratic, messy, and fun, and a place where everyone feels that they belong. That means for those of us who have seats at the table already, we have a responsibility to be a lot more like JJ. That means that we're gonna need to make space and pull up a lot of folding chairs. And when we need more space than that, that means squeezing in another folding table. As Dr. John Powell teaches, there is a difference between welcoming and belonging. Welcoming means we are still playing host. Belonging means that we share the table, that we shift the dynamic. And this means that Jewish philanthropy may look different, perhaps more balanced, authentic, and effective. To quote my friend Nancy Schwartz-Sternoff of Blessed Memory, none of this happens overnight and we must be patient, but let's also not sit around waiting for the Mashiach to come to bring about the change that is so needed. Thank you for this award. I am grateful to be part of this community. Mm -hmm.